action. I'm Rosania Stewart. I play for the London Lions. I am 33. How do I feel about coming to the end of my career again? Because I did retire three years before and I feel really good about it. I feel so different from the first time. Also, there was a first time, so I felt those emotions moving on to the next part of my life. It makes me understand that I'm doing the right thing. Um, and I just have to say thank you to the game because it's really made Azania Stewart be the best version of herself. I grew up in North London, um, born and raised. Home court to me is exactly it. In, in basketball terms, it's home court advantage. And home court is, is something that has made me who I am now. It comes with family, friends, fans, people who are from your area, understand your style. In my 30s, and I'm trying to figure out who this new woman is, I'm really liking her and in the city of London. My career really started to take off after I decided to go to America. I spent three years in high school in Virginia and then I spent four years and got a scholarship to Florida University. I came back from Florida after I graduated in 2012 and 2012 was the London Olympics. Woo -woo. I then went on and played six years pro. I think my next biggest achievement is the silver medal at the Commonwealth Games in 2018. My life was basketball and now I'm just finding a really beautiful balance in having um, a life <laughs> outside of basketball. I know that sounds crazy, but being able to meet a friend for coffee or, you know, take my mum shopping or whatever it is. Throughout my whole career, it's coming up to 20 years now that I've been playing basketball without my family and really their support. I don't really think I could have done the things that I wanted to. I'm the closest to my sister, Aisha, AKA Koblami Beauty. It's her business, it's her own um, baby. She kind of persuaded me to get my level three. It was when I was coming home through the pandemic and um, I just said, no thanks, that's your journey, hun, not for me. And she just said, why not? Like, you can help me out and improve your skills. She persuaded me, so it is her baby. And so for so long, of my life, I was her baby. And so now to give back, help, support, I can finally baby my older sister. Hello, my name is Aisha Corbett. I'm the sister of Azania Stewart. In terms of the sports gene, it most definitely did skip me. One thing that I would say to describe my sister is that she's definitely inspiring and she'll definitely push people during COVID and lockdown, we had to close our business for uh, 10 months. She kept me motivated. She kept my head from kind of going below the water. So what she puts in her basketball in terms of helping other people, she did definitely use those skills that she had there to put into our business. When we were little, I remember my mum saying to me, you have to look after your sister. And as soon as mum said that, that really stuck in my mind and um, I became very protective over Azania. And still until now, even though she's bigger than me and stronger than me, I'm still very protective. As a family, we're always helping each other out and we're always supporting each other. And that starts from the roots and that's mum. I think when Azania left or was scouted to leave, it was a case of letting her follow her dreams and not telling her that I missed her. Mm. was hard. Which was kind of cool because I found that out in my 30s that you yeah. missed me the first year and she never told me because she knew I'd come home years I ago. I even told your dad, not, don't, don't tell her you miss her because I think the homesickness the first year is the hardest. We did a lot of night shifts which actually paid more than the day shifts and there was times when I'd actually do double shifts. I think it was just nice to see somebody kind of get out of the country and then go, go abroad, go to uni. Mm. Yeah, because we didn't get to uni. We didn't get to uni. So, but then the worst part is when you'd only just got there and then you phone me up at like two o'clock in the morning saying, Mum, I'm sick. ill, yeah. I'm sick, I'm in hospital. 
and then that was it like the whole world kind of like fell apart yeah I had was, my kidney removed there was no, so it, got, it, it got yeah, infected it yeah. got infected what I'm so proud about the children there was never any jealousy London got the Olympics it yeah. was like yes we're gonna get to watch it was such a proud moment so for everyone proud. that had followed your journey just the fact that it's going to be something in history that can mm-hmm. never be taken away and I'm just really blessed to have children that are really good between Aisha and Azania we have Isa um, and she passed of Sid's sudden infant death when she was four and a half months probably why Aisha's very protective of Azania She's very, Open. yeah, and, and Elliot, so she would have been five when Issa passed. So I think that's why they're very tight as a family. I think sometimes people try to live their dreams through their children, but I think it's worked around the other way. I've actually really had the pleasure of enjoying my life, watching the children fulfil what they want to do in their dreams. And the next chapter of your journey is still mm. going to be awesome anyway. <laughs> Bam. Thank you. Um, so you. cute. Thank you. Lovely. Lovely more. Thanks. So I started playing for the London Lions. This is my second season, so it was two years ago. Mark wanted to go to Euro Cup. I'm a British player who had played at the highest level, so he really wanted that kind of vet presence. So my dynamic in the team, now I'm a facilitator. I don't score a lot. I'm getting tip balls, I'm screening, I'm sacrificing my body. And then the biggest thing that you can't start is my leadership. I can really control a practice if it's good or bad. And so if I know I have that power, then why would I want it to go terribly? The energy comes from minute one. You all right? Yeah, First met Azania when she was a member of the uh, England uh, under 16 national team. She's exactly like she is now, but just younger. Yeah, she's a leader, and that, that's not one of those leaders that has to shout. But when she speaks, people listen. When she does things on court, people learn and people watch. She creates a culture that helps the team get better. You can never take people like her for granted because they're always gonna be there for, a, for their teammate. Sometimes we gotta remember that we need to be there for her as well. The fact that she can play in front of her family, her friends, is a big deal for her. There's hundreds of girls from the, ex- the extended part of London that can look at Azania Stewart and say, I could, be, I could be like that. I've been a FIBA commentator for 20 years now. Uh, she was one of two or three people that I've been recommended. It looks like the next stage of her career is going to be in the media and she's already made a success of that. And she's now one of the more uh, respected commentators. So I play for the London Lions and I commentate for the London Lions men's. Now I'm getting ready for retirement. This is going to be my last season. It just makes sense. It works out that I move transitionally and smoothly onto commentary. I'm really, really lucky and blessed that I have the opportunity to live both. Seeing the game on the floor and off the court. You know, cameras, all the people that you work with. And then when you're on the floor, you realise how much work goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, I think a lot of my success is from my family and friends supporting me, but there's a lot to do with me. You know, there's moments where it is so hard and you can quit or give up. You really have to love it to come every day hard, give 100%. There are days that I play in um, pain, you know, and I have to get up, get to practice or play in a game and be um, the best that I can be. I just think my motivation, this sounds so cliche, but like greatness. I'm a perfectionist in anything I do. And sometimes it's, you know, gets on my nerves at how much I try and strive for it but if I've tried my best and I've worked my hardest then however that day is gone I've, I know that I've given it 110% and can be happy and can sleep at night. Um, I just think now um, I'm in a different space uh, my greatest fears are happening of um, not getting older but just I'm not moving as well I'm not as fast all these young girls are running around me and going past me and so I think it's just time for me to step away and and uh, leave the game with respect. Having commentating and moving on to the next part of my life makes me feel safe. And also I'm staying in the game, I'm not going far. Um, But I think I'm getting sad about it because how much I have dedicated to the game of basketball 
it's been my whole life and I'm happy to move on to the next level and the next space and still be in the game but what I'm looking forward to the next part of my life I do really feel like I try and be a role model not only for people I don't know but my family to be their strength or their rock or that we can do anything that we want to do. Basketball has given me that confidence. I'm happy to say that the next generation has an Azania Stewart to look up to and to inspire to be.